Welcome back, everybody, to episode 51 of the Roses and Rhetoric podcast. Um, if you're curious to know, yes, 51, and we do one episode a week. So, Joe, if my math serves me correctly, then next weekend will be our official one-year uh, anniversary, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah, the big five, too. The big five, too. I wonder what percentage of uh, high school relationships do you think we've outlasted? Give it a ballpark. Um, I don't know. Maybe uh, 69, 70% of them, I would say. Yeah, 69% sounds about right to me. Um, yeah. So very, very excited for that one year um, almost in, in the making. So we'll have to, you know, do our best to, to be back for, for next week. Joel, thank you for covering for me last week, as you know. I've been uh, making a uh, monthly trip out to Washington, D.C. to visit my significant other. I was uh, at a commission last weekend on that trip uh, back about um, about two hours ago. Made it back in Houston and uh, glad to be back in front of the camera doing what I love most, uh, being on here with my charming co-host. There you go. Yeah. How was uh, how was D.C.? DC is always fun, always an adventure. We uh, went to the to the zoo yesterday. That was fun. Saw there's a new panda there. I feel like every time I go to a zoo, there's a new fucking panda. I mean, how rare can they really be? I mean, they're, they're always announcing a new fucking panda bear. I uh, I got to be honest. I I find the panda to be one of the less charming of uh, the animals at the zoo. I don't know if I'm alone in saying that, but uh, I don't really get much from it. I, I got to be honest with you. I really I really don't see it. They're kind of lazy, right? They don't really do much. They're, they're extremely lazy. They basically, so the word panda kind of comes from this word that means a bamboo eater. And uh, basically they kind of only eat this one plant and they don't, from what I've been told, they don't do a great, do a great job digesting it. So they basically have to spend their whole day eating. And, uh, you know, they eat like 80 pounds of bamboo a day. I mean, that's just, you know, ridiculous. Um, yeah. What a lifestyle. Kind of a, kind of a dumb animal. Not really one that I care that much about. Um, animals I do care a lot about, for anybody curious, I'm a big fan of otters. I think otters are, are pretty cool. Um, they had some, some very playful otters there that we saw. And do then, otter, otters make dams or is that just the beavers? Just the beavers. Yeah, just, mm. just the damn beavers, um, which I also like for that reason. And we saw a beaver there as well. So, you know, got to see some nice aquatic mammalia while we were there. And then also the primate is always kind of fun to, uh, right. to, to see them as well. Um, they're always, you know, doing something interesting. There was a little baby orangutan that we saw that was interesting. And uh, the elephants, always larger than life. Always fun to see the elephants. Um, uh, they're giant, you know, these massive creatures. And, uh, you know, always exciting to see that. Um, but, yeah, these fucking panda bears, I don't, I don't, I couldn't care less about the pandas. I got to be honest with you. I really, I was going care you know, I was I went to a zoo in Prague a few days ago or a few weeks ago. And no panda bears there, unfortunately. But. The one thing I want to do better before going to the zoo is find out the the fucking cat schedule. Like I went there and I looked at all the cats and they're either sleeping or they're not there. So yeah. they got to be awake at some point or I don't know. Did, did you see any cats? That is an excellent point. Hopefully the first of many for this episode. Um, the, the big cat schedule. The big cats are always yeah. a... Um, kind of prized possession of the zoo. They're always fun to watch at the, at the national zoo that I went to, we saw, they had a whole bunch of tigers. So we thought it was, it was we, we, we saw the tigers and uh, we saw, you know, some kind of, you know, leopard, something like thing. And then animal called a fishing cat, which was, uh, you know, kind yeah. of like a bobcat maybe, but it was a cat that would like dive in the water for food. That was kind of cool. But riddle me this. Why can't we just design these fucking cages so that wherever the animal is, we can fucking see them? Is there some right. storage of glass that I'm not aware of? I mean, why can't we just fucking put windows everywhere so we can just look around? I mean, why why haven't we figured that out yet? I mean, an another one, the same problem is with these fucking reptile exhibits. Yeah, these fucking reptiles, the looking at I'm looking at a fucking, you know, uh, a terrarium, not one fucking thing. And it's like, oh, no, no. It's that little thing in the back that you can't fucking see. Oh, that's, that's, that's wonderful. That's real special. Yeah. That's yeah. real great. I mean, these animals are outsmarting us. They, we have built these fucking cages for the sole purpose of looking at these fucking things, and nobody can fucking see them. I mean, what the hell are we doing? 
We why do we give them? Why would we give them a place to hide? These animals live rent free in this fucking country. They live rent free. Are you kidding me that we don't get to fucking see them when they're tired? That's bullshit. <laughs> Joe, I, I, these animals are outsmarting us. We have what, like a million years of evolution on these fucking things, and they, these these reptiles we can't fucking outsmart. These lizards and snakes that can hide and we can't fucking see them because some retard put a fucking log in their cage that's turned the wrong fucking direction and they go in there and fucking hide. Are you are you kidding me? I, Who are the brain designing these fucking things? Let's get some mirrors or something. Like let's, something. let's How about wake a them up. Camera. I mean, my God, we're being outsmarted by animals without fucking legs. Right. And it's always like the the lame animals that are always out that you can see. Oh, like oh, the, hey, like, cool. like the prairie this dog. Cool. This animals are relative of the fucking deer and it's the relative of the fucking horse. Who gives a shit? I don't give a shit about it. I want to see lions, tigers. Luckily, I will say this about all the all the cool primates. You, you normally see them. They're normally pretty sociable. The apes, yeah. the orangutans, the gorillas. You normally see they're, them. They're moving that, around. They're moving yeah. around. They're, you, you see them. They're out. They're playful. That's great. You always see them. You normally see the otters. You know, every, every fucking zoo has their sea lion exhibit, with, you know, which is great. You see the kind of wall partitioning between the water and the land. We always see those fucking things. But when it comes to the exotic reptiles and to the big cats, we haven't figured out how to put a fucking mirror in their den. Right. The coolest ones. The coolest ones. How about There's a the reason bears? people hunt these fucking bears? things in the wild. They're the coolest fucking animals out there. Yeah, they're the trophy game. <laughs> they're the trophy. They're the trophy. What game are we, what game are we playing? We can't even fucking see these fucking things. I mean, my God. <laughs> Um, did you see polar bears or penguins or anything like that? At no, your no penguins, no polar bears. Um, and probably polar bears are cool. that we saw that. Yeah, polar bears are great. Penguins are penguins are, are probably you know behind otters. One really like the playful animal highlight is seeing the penguins you know fuck around and do all kinds of crazy shit. I love seeing yeah. the penguins. you and I. We're both from Tucson. Don't they have the, the big penguin thing over in the Tucson Zoo? Or am I imagining? Oh, gosh. Well, I know the my, penguins my love, love the heat, from, so maybe. Yeah. Yeah, sweltering <laughs> heat, perfect for the penguins. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I, I love, I love uh, the uh, penguin exhibits they always built and uh, the otter ones too. Um, the, only, the only bears that we saw there, they have a bear called the Andean bear, which is from South America that we saw, the panda bear, which I could have done without. And then they had one more bear and... Um, it's called a, bear? It's, no, it's called the, no, the uh, elusive shark bear wasn't around. I think it was called the sloth bear. Hope I'm not making that animal up, but uh, they were all right. You know, they're all right. I mean, really the only cool bear is a polar bear. I think that, that, that you'll see in a zoo. I don't know if they have like grizzly bears in zoos or not, but you know, polar bears, when you see a polar bear, it's always a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. But look, talking about zoos, I think that my favorite part of the zoos, though, is the the snack bars they have, the food that they have. There's nothing like walking around because you you're always walking for miles when you go to the zoo. You walk They're five so spread out. Fucking miles at that. At yeah. That. And you're just you're just thinking about that midday hot dog and a coke the whole yeah, time. Absolutely. And when that time finally comes, it, it just hits. It's good. <sighs> Let me also remind people of this, that against anyone's judgment and, you know, just more, more proof of the unpredictability of the world that we live in, the inherent chaos of an open society, Dippin' Dots is still around and they're still going strong. Don't you love that? We got some Dippin' Dots at the zoo, still good, still one of the best. Snacks. And for some reason, I think they're only at the zoos. I don't know who, who owns them, but they're only at zoos. Um, we got some Dippin' Dots at there. Of course, you only ever need to get a small cup of Dippin' Dots. You'll, you'll never finish a large. It's just, it's, a, it's an impossibility. Yeah, it's just diabetes. Yeah, you're not, you'll die. You'll literally die before you finish it. But the small Dippin' Dots that, we, that my wife and I got were just, just the perfect midday snack for the, for the zoo. Because you are, you're walking for miles. And by, you know, hour four, you're kind of over it. But you, you got to finish the loop or something. So you're kind of committed to it at that point. But the Dippin' Dots, right. just, just enough calories to kind of get you through that, uh, that, that, that midday hump. Yeah, and walking around, it's not it's not like a leisurely thing to walk around. Like you said, you're playing like where's Waldo with the reptiles. It's you, yeah, yeah. You're, you're putting effort in. Friend. You know who's who, it, who's hunting who? Really? It's an act. It's an active active endeavor to go yeah. do. 
And then the other thing, did you, okay. So they gave me some silverware because I went, well, in Prague, they like gave me some like sausage because that's what they serve everywhere is just sausage. And they give you like a knife and the fork with the sausage. This knife and the fork was so compostable, so environmentally friendly. Right. that just breaking it out of the package, I lost two prongs on my fork and my yeah. knife cracked in half. Yeah. It's like, okay, great. Like yeah. I get it. We 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 don't want the the panda bears or whatever to choke on the knives, but like, come on, can we come up with something a little bit better than this? Yeah, I mean, you're 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 seeing the same thing now in bathrooms. You go to the bathrooms now, it's like I'm I'm my, my ass Bible paper. I mean, this 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 thing is just like half a ply. You know, it's just ridiculous. We got to find a middle ground. We got to find a middle ground with this stuff. Um, I I I don't like the plastic straws. I would much prefer just like building the habit of always having a reasonable straw with me than having to use these mm. paper things that are just awful. They just fall apart. They just dissolve. Yeah. Yeah. They get soggy. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't. I, I thought this was common knowledge. I, I encountered a person. I won't say who. I don't want to embarrass anybody. But um, I thought this was common knowledge. I could be mistaken. I'll, I'll illuminate the audience of the show is in case anyone is also in a similar veil of ignorance, allow me to show you or to explain something to you. When you get an icy or a slushy, but usually an icy, and almost always a name brand IC, ICWE, the straw that it gives polar you, bears. The, what, speaking of polar bears, the straw that comes with that has a little, has a little slot in the bottom of it. Like a spoon, now, right? It, 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 it's a little spoon. Now, I had someone the other day tell me that they didn't know that that's what that was, you know, that was for that purpose. It kind of gave me a little bit of concern. I thought, oh, my goodness. So I thought well, I better tell people that little, you know, cutout at the bottom of your icy straw is meant as a spoon to kind of mm. get those last little bits out there. Or if your slushy or icy is a little too thick for the for the sucking out of the straw, just to eat it until it melts a little bit to make it you know better for sucking it out. Um, but uh, I, apparently that wasn't common knowledge. I figured I would put, kind of put that out there. People know that um, because of course I got an icy. Or actually, you know, I didn't get icy. What did I get? I got a root beer float. This is not at the zoo, but just another snack that I had on this last week's trip. And uh, this came about, so I figured I would share that with the audience, make sure we're all on the same page um how that yeah. feature worked you know uh, in spain there was uh, some some road some road vendors that were going around stealing necklaces with little uh, little spoons like very small spoons at the end of them and uh the more i think about it maybe those are for the ICs, you know in case you got a mean. scoop a little icy or something they were stealing them from people no they weren't they were selling them to people selling they were, them to people. They were offering them yeah necklaces offering little, little offering little little spoons yeah, on a necklace, like on a okay. chain or something. Uh, uh, possibly. Yeah, I mean, I what else could it be for? I think it'd have to be that. Um, well, five minutes later, someone walked by trying to sell cocaine, so it might have something to do with that. But I don't know. I guess you could use it for a slushy. Use it for multiple purposes. There's no reason. For an icy. Yeah. As long as that spoon's not made of paper, it'll last you multiple uses, whatever you're doing with it. So. <laughs> oh, yeah, totally reusable. <laughs> let me let me tell you this too as you as you know i'm a i'm a huge fan of the flaming hot cheeto talked about that on the, on the show before i'm sure in washington dc i was there for a, a, like eight days when i tell you i could not find one fucking bag of flaming hot cheetos not wow. a single bag and i was not the only person looking for these things i saw other people in the stores looking for them too i heard him kind of go where are the flaming hot cheetos where are the cheetos oh they're right here no no those are the cheese kinds i want the flaming hot cheetos Mm. I don't know if there was a shortage. I don't know if we're like on the cutting edge or something, but uh, I tell you, they were not. There was not one bag of Fleming Hot Cheetos in that whole metropolitan area. I looked. I looked several days in a row, not one bag. Um, I eventually bought some off-brand from from a uh, you know a, a grocery store type establishment, and uh, uh, it was horrible. It was just awful. You know, sometimes the off-brands aren't bad. But uh, right. this particular off-brand, it was like, I, I told my wife, it was like, as if someone had sucked the life out of a Cheeto and gave it to me. It was just, there was no soul in it. There was no flavor and it was just nothing. No vigor, no nothing. No, no will to live. No, 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 yeah. no spice of life is nothing. Just, just, you know, this lifeless red little, you know, curly cue. And it was just a, not good. <laughs> you, you hate to see that happen. I don't know. I, hopefully there's no uh, supply shortage. But wait, I thought you were off the hot Cheeto game. Are you back on it now? 
I'm uh, I'm I'm back on only during the weekends. I'm back on. Weekends I, I on. found I found a good rhythm with uh, with them where I'm kind of avoiding any of the side effects. People who eat these things, all I'm talking about, I won't go into further detail, but um, I found that if I limit my consumption to the weekends, you know, I kind of get all the pros now with the cons. So it's a nice little a nice little win for me. Um, the the problem is that really there's no other snack even you know, tastes good to me now. I've just become so like attached to the Fleming Hyde Cheeto snaggage that everything else just feels kind of like, yeah, I don't really want it. And uh, right. so, you know, that's life for me, I guess. Well, hopefully they got them back in Houston. Um, oh, they did. I already bought some. <laughs> oh, you already stocked up already and some. Yeah, I already got some on the way home. Uh, yeah, they found them. It was ready, ready to go. I know it was perfect. It was just what I wanted. Um, it was uh, it was really good, really good. Um, how how else was DC? Did you go to any of like the the famous sites or anything like that? We went to the Natural History Museum, which is always fun. Yeah. And, That's uh, supposed to be a good one, right? Yeah, it was great. We went there. Um, another kind of all day thing. That was a lot of fun. Um, we had our, uh, on a previous trip had done a lot of the monument scene, so we didn't do that so much this trip, but we did that on the previous one, did a lot of the monuments. Yeah. But um, no, it's great. I, I recommend people go out there and see the uh, the monuments, see the sites, and uh, go to the museums. The only museum we haven't been to yet that I will, that I will, will go to probably next time is uh, the Air and Space Museum. It's like under construction right now, but uh, I, I told people this. I don't know if you ever thought this, but for the longest time, I thought it was called the Aaron space museum and i was like who is this Aaron guy that every every state has a museum with this guy's name on who the hell is this guy like, Aaron space. yeah well, i was like Aaron, is this some famous astronaut or something a pilot maybe but yeah. <laughs> um what was the how were the covid restrictions over there was it i know in texas there's like nothing right so was dc locked down or open no was basically deal? wear a mask that was basically the uh the covid stuff we did a lot of the metro riding they're kind of subway system. So just wear a mask yeah. in there on the Metro. And um, probably, I think we went to a few restaurants, kind of the same thing. And then um, inside of the museums, I'm trying to think of, uh, they were both, well, the zoo was all outside. Anything outside in the zoo, you don't have to wear a mask. There were, there were some things at the zoo that were like in building, they wear a mask in those. And the uh, museum, the uh, Natural History Museum mask too. But besides that, it was, you know, that was it, nothing else. Um, yeah, and then the same thing on the flight. You had to wear a mask on the flights. I just got off. Of yeah, I gotta yeah. say, once you once you get a little taste of freedom, like when I was in the Eastern Bloc, like Hungary and Poland and Czech Republic, and there's just no mask requirements whatsoever. Uh, once you get that little taste of freedom, it's tough to come back to reality because Spain and Portugal. Is that where you're? It. Is that where you're at right now? I'm in Portugal right now. I'm in Portugal. Lisbon. And uh, I think just within the past week, they reinstated masks. It was, it was pretty wild. We were out last night, actually, and there were the cops are just, okay, so we went out Friday night and it was just insane, just insanity. People are just like in the streets, like no social distancing, just like partying, just outside these bars. Can't even pull through it in like an Uber, like a car can't even get through. And we're like, okay, that was a lot of fun. We got to go back there the next night. So we came back the next night and then there's just cops everywhere. They're just totally like regulating. Like we were in this bar and they made an announcement like, all right, everyone sit down right now, sit down, sit down. You know, like they cut the music and made that was announcement. Was it in English or was it in Portuguese? Uh, I, I think it was in English. Okay. I mean, I just- The thing, the the thing is, yeah, they because everyone speaks English here pretty much. Right. So if you make an announcement in English, everyone will understand yeah. it. But if you yeah, make yeah. it in Portuguese, maybe only like half the people would understand it, I guess. Yeah, no, that's a good like but, funny thing that happens in like distributions where it's, you don't have to be the most popular. Uh, it's like better to be at the most common denominator than like the main thing of something. So like, yeah, nobody speaks English has their first language, but everyone else has like their second or third. So like it's uniform. Everybody knows it to some extent. So it becomes the language that everyone speaks. Yeah. And Portugal, Portugal is weird because it's so small and it's right next to Spain. So like everyone speaks Spanish, but like they don't, some people speak Spanish. They don't really speak English. So just uh, going to a restaurant or like talking with someone like, you're speaking all three languages to the person like you'll say as much portuguese as you know and then you'll say it in spanish and they won't understand you say it in english you, it's, it's all over the map it's like a three languages to communicate well, so when you're when you're in portugal 
because you were in Spain before this, right? Yeah. So do you notice a big cultural difference between the two? Yes. Yeah, they're super different. Okay. Well, I mean, I've never all, been to either place. I'm just curious how that. Yeah, it's, I guess they're not totally different. I mean, people in Portugal are definitely darker. I would say is like the first thing that stands out. Like skin uh, tone or like outlook on life. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, and out, outlook on life too. They have this <laughs> this type of music called fado, which is just like suadade is what they call it, and it's all about like longing and nostalgia. Like there's because oh. their their whole their whole civilization is based on these like explorers like Vasco da Gama and all these people that like went on big ships and like explored the world right. like I was like chapter three of South America book. back in the day chapter three or four they're like so exploring and yeah and they're yeah. still like kind of like caught up on it like they're just their whole culture is kind of based on that I mean they're the Spanish are definitely like more lively but they're just like a little bit more like the Portuguese a little more like nostalgic and hmm. I don't know not not as not as gloomy as the eastern Bloc, but they're, they're more art, artsy for sure. Which one? Portugal is? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's like, it's an island, right? I mean, like... No, Portugal. it's it's like half of that Iberian Peninsula, oh, on the okay. Atlantic side. Okay. I haven't seen a map in so long. Yeah, I, don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, I know. That's the thing. Like, the whole European map was just one big swirl to me before I actually came <laughs> over here. And, <laughs> I think I might have been thinking, what's the little place by Italy? It's Sicily, right? That's an island. Mm-hmm. That's an option. Yeah, there, there's Sicily at the bottom, and then there's like Malta, which is another like small island off Italy. Very but, well. So, how many how many weeks have you been in, in Europe for? You know, it was supposed to be a one week trip, and I think that was about three months ago. <laughs> so, I thought, so I keep finding keep finding excuses to stay out here between. Well, this is the best. Uh, this is the best there. connection you've had in probably uh, ten shows. So, I'm not complaining. Oh yeah. Yeah, well, the, the funny thing is the hotel I'm at, like, there's no connection whatsoever in the room itself. I had to come down to the lobby, and it's just, like, perfect connection in the lobby. So, I don't know. We got blessed with this. Unfortunately, I have no Wi-Fi, so I'm just burning through data as I'm like, scrolling <laughs> through TikTok videos in the room. Burning through data. Uh, so well, what, what else is new? Is uh, is our, 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 our frequent guest of Roses and Rhetoric uh, still traveling with you as well? Yeah, the uh, the guest co-host is still traveling. She actually leaves tomorrow, so it's going to be a uh, she'll leave tomorrow, and then it's going to be like two and a half weeks of me by myself, and then um, flying into Arizona. So winding things up here, just a few weeks left. Are you going to stay in uh, Portugal for the rest of those two weeks? Yeah, I don't know. I do want to go like to the southern coast of Portugal because I started like in Porto, which is like to the north, and I went to mm-hmm. Lisbon, which is in the middle, and I kind of want to go to the southern. And I kind of want to go back to Spain because Spain was like, at least I could communicate with people somewhat because <laughs> it's a little easier with Spanish, but right. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. I guess I got some time to figure it out. I got two more nights at this hotel and then I'm were there, in there. Were there any countries you didn't go to while you were there? Any of the big ones that I would know of? Yeah. Uh, didn't make it to France or Germany. France or Germany. Okay. Those are like the two that I'll definitely have to come back and revisit, but you know, with all, sounds like they have some pretty intense COVID restrictions in place right now. And I got Austria, which is like Germany light, I would say. Yeah, I'm sure they think of it that way. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, no, I gotta say, this is, uh, this has been really cool to uh, kind of travel by proxy with you through, through Europe. Um, let me ask you yeah. this, traveling wise, would you rather take out, take out COVID, take out, you know, anything like that, just in general? Mm-hmm. Would you rather travel through South America or Asia? Mm. You know, I think that I just have such a false idea of South America being super dangerous. Um, you know, I think like some places definitely are, like maybe around Panama and that right in that that pinch point um, where all the drugs go through. But you know, I was talking to some dude, and I know you've been to Bolivia before, but this guy was from Bolivia, and he's like, "Oh yeah, super safe. Just like rent a car, you'll be fine." And everyone I talked to just said it's safe. Um, so I don't know if I'm just, I, I would probably do South America just because, well, Spanish is like easier to get around with. Right. Be less of a struggle in terms of just the, the uh, social lubrication of communicating. Yeah. And things and, yeah. Yeah. I think, and I've never really been to Asia before. So it just seems like a little more too more foreign and scary. So I'd, 
probably pick South America before Asia. Yeah. But I don't know. It's hard to say. Uh, I would. Yeah, I, think uh, that, uh, I really, you know, a place I want to go to, I know nothing about it. I just know that it's a country that has a lot of cool things going on in it. Now, this is all kind of like the popular, you know, magazine yeah. cover, if you will, of what you would see of it. But um, I really want to look at Singapore. That looks, looks like a fun place to go oh, visit. Yeah. Um, and uh, I really want to visit Japan. I've had a few friends that have visited Japan that had a good time when they were there. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I think I, I, I think South America would be would be a lot of fun too. I mean, I also, I mean, I, I would say Mexico too, which I'm sure you've been to as well, or that you've been to before too. But when my wife and I went on vacation a couple of years ago, we went to the uh, to the pyramids in Mexico, and I mean, it was uh, spectacular. Oh that yeah. And, Is that uh, in Cancun or? No, it wasn't in Cancun. It was um, Cozumel. No, I can't remember now the name of the city. I'll think of it in a minute. I'll, if I remember, I'll, I'll say it. But um, we 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 saw the the, the pyramids and um, hmm. any any time any you you, you 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 get this traveling through Europe too. But just when you look at things that have been around for a long time, it helps kind of put you know history in perspective. I mean, you know, all the people that were building these pyramids that they had day to day worries too. They were worried about something and then that passed and you know life went on and so i always think that would be that'd be fun to go to the people that i know that really enjoyed europe they enjoyed that part of it you see things that are hundreds of years old just like every street corner you know america is such a young place it's incredible yeah it's, it's unreal in america there's nothing like that i was just in dc where the, you know, probably some of the oldest stuff in the country is and it's like a couple yeah. hundred years old there's like nothing you're walking here it's like a castle like a thousand years old or you know hundreds of years old and it's just totally different it's just a totally different world there's just so much history and I, I try to learn it too. Like whatever country I go, I try to you know watch all the YouTube videos on the history of it. And it's just so much, it's like too much. It's like, okay, here's a crash course in uh, Spanish history. And it's still like 25 minutes long. Right. <laughs> and it's just like action packed. So many people just conquer, reconquer. And it's just, it, it's unreal. You see, you can't keep track of it. Yeah. You can't keep track of it. And it's, you know, it's, it, it's all, it all takes place in a world that's so foreign to anybody alive today, for the most part, the idea, yeah. you know, you have Kings fighting other Kings and you have, you know, it's like, what are they even fighting over? I don't, I don't know. And there's just, always fighting. <laughs> always fighting. And um, I just think that it's just such a different world than what most of us are, are I mean, luckily <laughs> I want to make it sound like I'm right. not, obviously I'm glad we're no longer fighting all the time. But yeah, um, no one fights nowadays. Yeah, no, 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 never anymore. But um, but yeah, I mean, it, I think it would just be so, just so weird. I mean, I, I always like. I don't know if you did this. I went to an eighth grade field trip Washington DC, and they showed you like how the like Connors. Oh, I've lived. never been. Yeah, so they did like a like how to like how the Connors lived, and it just it would just be crazy to like live in that time. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it makes you grateful for <laughs> for not having to be alive in that time, and um. I mean, I'm sure people in the future will feel the same way about us, but uh, yeah, I mean, I think I think going to uh, to Asia would be would be fun for that same reason because I mean, of course, they have yeah. cultures as well, and it goes back forever. And I mean, it just be interesting to see that. And um, there's the uh, the the human story continues, and that's kind of like the whole thing about seeing the Natural History Museum is they kind of walk you through those different stages, and. Mm. It's just crazy. I mean, it's just it's just crazy how big the world. I, I, I met a I met in a, an astronomer when I was just in DC this past weekend, and um, he was saying that his research. He's in another program now, but he used to do research in uh, like how galaxies, you know, like like galactic uh, astrophysics. And he was saying that like back but currently the Milky Way, the rate that it forms stars, is far too slow to account for the stars in the galaxy. And so there must have been a period prior to the one that we're in now where they were forming stars much more quickly. And uh, I was I was telling you, I was like, does it, does it ever seem strange to you that there was like all this time before people were ever even here, that it was just like things were dynamic and changing and going about and is it was we it was weren't here. And um, you know, for him, it was like that was part of the excitement. It was uh, oh, you know, it's, it's interesting to, to kind of see how that stuff comes about, but um. I don't know, it kind of gives me it's almost like an eerie feeling that uh, there was just so much history before us that yeah. uh, you know it's like they sort of like the little like sliver of how long we've been here. It's like this like tiny, tiny little sliver, and uh, mm -hmm. 
you know, it's, it's just a, bit, a big of abyss of history before that. Yeah, exactly. And um, cool. yeah, it's kind of a eerily eerie feeling. Well, that's a, Scott Adams. He, he says that, you know, that well, if he because he thinks we live in a simulation. So if we right. did live in a simulation, you wouldn't need history. You would just kind of make it up on demand. No, oh, right. You know I what I mean? Kind of like generate it. Like as you go looking yeah. for it, it kind of appears to you. Kind of thing. So, so maybe there is no history. Maybe it all is just, yeah. this is all you get. It was all you yesterday. Can make, make it up as a go. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, ever like when you were younger, ever imagine like if every day before this one was just a dream that they had like uploaded into your mind. So like yeah. everything in the past is like a dream, like right now. Um, it's, and you would never know it. Never know. Never know it. You never know. You would never, you would never know. No, it was a lot of fun. I, uh, I, I like museums and I think it would be fun to go to yeah. Europe too. I, uh, oh yeah, you gotta go, dude. You definitely gotta go. Go somewhere safe. Go somewhere with a lot of museums. Yeah. You have a good I time. Think it, I think it'd be fun. I mean, it was so. Go, go, go somewhere travel. with hot Cheetos. Well, well I gotta I like send a box over. Um, what, what general travel tips would you, if anybody was planning a, a Europe trip, you know, what, and again, not in terms uh, of politics or COVID, but just in general, are there things yeah. that, that you wish you would have known before leaving or things even that, that you lucked out on that you, that you did right without realizing you did right or anything like that? Uh, don't wait for the staff to bring you a check when you're out at dinner or when you're out eating a meal because <laughs> it's not going to happen. They just don't do it. Europeans just eat like long meals and they won't give you the check until you ask for it. Even if they're like closing, they feel rude coming up and giving it to you. So <laughs> be ready to ask for that. Um, definitely pack light. You don't want to, it's, it's just a nightmare when you have like five or six different bags that you're trying to carry yeah. amongst two people through trains and getting on and off the trains is stressful because like it's quick stops and just have like compact bags, keep them, always keep them in your eyesight. Cause like you always hear stories about like people just, I saw a girl in Rome. She just had her suitcase. Like she was, she was two girls sitting at a table outside of a cafe in Rome and uh, some dude just came up, grabbed one of the suitcases and started running just like in the open um i think he dropped it once the girl started screaming at him and one of the waiters started chasing him but yeah i mean you just i always keep everything like tethered to me like even like sitting here my backpack's like wrapped around my ankle right now right but but yeah i'd say that i don't know i think i i think it really helps just to learn like a few words of a language uh, so they don't think that you're just some like ass asshole american tourist right like even if you're not good at it or it doesn't even like make sense really. Like, I feel like they appreciate just like a token effort. It just yeah, sets you apart right, yeah. from every other one else. Yeah. yeah. So, Which, you, uh, let me ask you this one, uh, cause you always hear Americans are like out of geography and like, you know, kind of all the American cliches and everything else. And um, yeah, I feel like, you know, we're all on the same team here, people. We gotta, we gotta improve our image somehow. Let's just learn a, a few fucking words. Just, just something. Well, right. And it, and it's weird because Americans don't learn any other languages. Like, sure, we take like Spanish for twelve years, but no one knows how to speak Spanish. Right, which um, is amazing. Like the lack, yeah. the lack of return that we can't figure out how to teach the language. And uh, you know, I, I I took Spanish through like grade school through maybe half of high school, and I can't yeah. speak. How is that possible? Right? I I took I math know. for that same period of time. I'm pretty good at math. I learned how to do math, or how to do engineering, or how to do science. I can't learn how to do it on the language. Is it really that different? Yeah, I mean, I guess, I don't know. Maybe you just never have to use it, but it, it's incredible how many people in Europe speak English. Pretty much everyone from the younger generation does. A lot of the older generation just like doesn't give a fuck and doesn't care. It just like hates you. But like the younger generation here is like super cool. And um, I, I think that in the coming years, Europe is going to get real awesome because of that. Because they're just like reasonable. They're just like chill and reasonable people. They didn't grow up under Soviet control like the, <laughs> generation before them. Yeah, the, uh, the charming Eastern block that you had a good time in. Oh my gosh. But so pack no, light. I think it's gonna be good. Pack light, learn a couple words, keep your yeah luggage and eyesight at all times and or tethered to you at all times. Oh yeah. What about uh, have you found the train system easy to use? Has it been a easy learning curve in terms of transportation? Uh the first ones were like a little stressful just because I like, didn't know what I was doing, but uh because what it is is like it's like okay i'm gonna get to the train station i'm gonna get there like an hour early i'm gonna be prepared i'm gonna get on my train it's not gonna be a problem 
The problem is that they they don't announce the gate that the train arrives in, like the platform, right. until ten minutes before. And like some of these train stations are massive, so like you just have to be like staring at the screen. It'll pop up and it's like go, and you just have to run over there. And it still like gets like a little sketchy sometimes, but I mean usually you can get there on time. But it's it's just, you just can't like get there early. <laughs> <That's the problem. laughs> and then yeah, trains are a great place to get stuff stolen. We haven't. It hasn't been that bad for us because we've just like keep real good tabs on everything. Like we, mm. everything's in eyesight all the time. Uh, but yeah, trains are definitely the best way to get around here. Even flights, dude. It's like a flight to a different country is like fifty euros. It's like sometimes cheaper than trains. Really? Oh yeah. Oh my god. I think we flew from Greece to Rome for like thirty euros each. Forty euros. What is that in dollars? Like. Uh, like uh yeah i think it's like point point eight euros is one dollar point eight point nine so yeah it's pretty much the same pretty close jesus yeah no i gotta go to europe yeah <laughs> yeah and it's been nice with all the covid stuff because like we just get to go to museums and we're like the only ones there pretty much they really limit the amount of people that can be there. So normally things that are just thousands of people, you're just a right. group of like 10. Are the are the museums free? Were the ones that you've been to so far or how does that work? No, I mean, the churches are usually free because there's so many and they're just so awesome. But like the museums, like there was a national history museum probably cost like 20 euros each to get into. I don't know what you paid in uh, DC for years, probably around there. I think the uh, DC ones are all uh, free. Oh, they're free? I think so. Oh, awesome. I, I oh, wasn't in charge awesome. of any of it, so I, I can say definitively, but I think they're all they're all free. Yeah, and I went to Castle today. It's probably like 10 or so euros to get in. Um, it just depends. But, I mean, honestly, that stuff, like, I I don't have any guilt just shedding cash on that because it's like it's like a learning yeah. experience. And, and you're kind of going there for that, right? Like, yeah. this part, like it's, you know, it's like part of the travel expense and, you know. Yeah, it's like. Yeah, I have, I have no guilt spending money on museums or anything like that. Experiences like that, I would say. Is uh, Are you able to take pictures of everything everywhere that you go in? Is it uh, pretty Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Well, I, I talked about this on the last podcast, how, like, uh, there were a couple times where I got in some sketchy situations taking pictures where I shouldn't. But uh, for the most part, I've taken, like, almost half a terabyte of pictures at this point. Jesus. Now, like, just you thousands. Your does it, I know that you yeah. have a camera, right? Does your finger, what yeah. is it, a camera? Yeah, I brought my, my Sony. Sony? Okay. Yeah, I brought my, my, my little camera, and it's it's been awesome. I take it with me everywhere. Hashtag uh, Jose four scores under, four score, four <laughs> underscore Cuervo. I messed this up last time, too. Did you really? Jose. God, I'm gone. I'm going to kill our outro. Uh, I like that. No, I, I always feel like I think like photography is one of those good like skills you should probably have at your disposal a little bit, you know, because like everybody has a camera phone that has this like amazing capability. It'd probably be nice to just you know develop a little bit of a skill set around taking good pictures. Probably pay some dividends. Yeah, I mean you gotta you gotta get the the Instagram going because that's like your resume for life. I mean Instagram really is my resume at this point because I don't like have a job. Yeah, no, really. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you got to get it going, but got to get you got to get honestly, it in, right. Jose three underscores, <laughs> four, four score, four underscores, Corvo. Four score underscores. <laughs> but yeah, and it's like it's weird because like the the camera I have actually I have it right here. I'm, I'm uploading now. Um, it's like kind of it's a like a mirrorless DSLR type thing. Oh yeah, one of those. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like it takes really good pictures but like the iphone technology like sometimes i just have to use the iphone like if the background's super bright and the foreground's super dark like this does so much better job than this um i mean you could do it with this but you got to do it like using photoshop afterwards or something lightroom but so it's like i'm like switching off back and forth uh but yeah i'm i'm looking through that viewfinder like half the day usually taking pictures very good. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm taking I'm taking some notes. You know, we'll probably do a uh, uh, plan a trip or something with the wife. Yeah. Go somewhere. Go to, go to Italy. Italy's pretty safe. It's awesome. 
Lots yeah. of history, lots of scenic. Yeah, everybody that goes to Italy likes it. Like Germany always gets good reviews. Um, hmm. England would be fun. Yeah, I like the places. Yeah, to go. there's lots of good stuff. Everything's just not how I imagined, but just as epic as the last place, I would say. Yeah. Well, hopefully, get over to uh, South America soon, and we can uh, keep the the travel blog going. Let's do it. As long as how they have how is it in terms there. of uh, in, in terms of like expense? Have you spent about as much as you thought you would, or is it more or less than what you thought it'd be? Um. Yeah, I mean, every once in a while, you just end up in a country that's like super cheap, like uh, just like Hungary was super cheap, like some parts of Spain, like. But typically, you can spend expect to spend like 10, 10 bucks a head per meal, fifteen bucks a head per meal when yeah. you go out um they don't serve water for free so you always have to buy that that's like an extra couple euros um what the fuck are all those fountains for yeah i know right and then uh hotels they can be like you can get a real good hotel for like 100 bucks a night pretty easily um you can stay in hostels for like 50 bucks a night uh granted with like a single room so like hostels uh, you can, they either have like these big group rooms where you just like get a bunk and it's like dirt cheap, like 20 bucks, or you can like upgrade and get like a single room. And that's like closer to like 50, I would say. Um, but it's, it's still kind of like dumpy and I don't know. Hostels are like fun when you're trying to meet people and like get friend groups going. But if you're just trying to like relax and chill, like it's not helpful having like drunk girls screaming outside your room at four in the morning. Right. So I mean, it all just depends what your comfort level is, but I mean, you can get super solid hotels for like no more than a hundred a night, easy. That's good to know. I put a little, put a little travel blog together, a little travel list. Yeah, yeah, I've, I've stayed in so many hotels at this point in hostels. It's they're all just kind of blurring into one. How how accurate do you find the online reviews? This is this is my last question, but that's, um, that's what I'm curious for. Are you able to use oh, reviews to, to to judge things pretty accurately? Yeah, so not a lot of people use iPhones, but using Google Maps, you can get pretty good reviews on just about anything. Okay. They're they're accurate too. Yeah, that's what I wanted to know if they're accurate or not, because you actually can use them to make a decision. Yeah, like if we had looked up the reviews for that club in Poland that we went to, right. uh, <laughs> we probably would have been deterred from going. Right, but, right. But, oh yeah, God. live and learn. Well, great. Well, I hope you enjoyed episode 51 brought to you by Coca-Cola today. We'll be... Uh, there you go. What is that? What is that can shape? What is this? Sabor original. <laughs> Look at that. Isn't that, isn't that a weird shape? It looks like a Red Bull can. Oh, yeah, every Coke has been looked differently. And you know what? I found it. They all have different tastes. Like, it's not the same taste. It says original flavor, but they're all different. They're all a little bit different. It's weird. Different packaging, different taste. Different, different, the notes, same. different, different pairings. Um, very good. Well, any, any, anything else you wanted to uh, hit on before we close out our, our penultimate for the year episode? Or oh, man, uh, just just want to let the the listeners and the, the viewers get ready because uh, we got the big five two coming next week. So the big five, the big five two, will do a uh, a year in review. Um, talk about our highlights, our favorite moments, where you know where, where we want the show to go, um, upcoming plans, all those kind of fun things. Um, 51 episodes we haven't missed a week between the two of us we haven't missed a week this is yeah a i don't think i don't think i've been this consistent at anything ever oh. no no I, I don't think so either for myself not talking about you um <laughs> no this is this has been great i'm, lo I'm really looking forward to the next uh, episode um so be sure to check us out then follow joe on instagram and twitter joe allow me jose for please, please. Scores. <laughs> Cuervo, find him on the IG and on the Twitter app. Um, and you'll find us on Twitter at roses underscore rhetoric. And on YouTube, just search roses and rhetoric will come right up. Be sure to like, share, subscribe, etc. Until next time, I'm Jimmy Hackett signing off for Joseph Stanford saying ciao.